Good morning. This is Ed Cashman, Standard Plans Engineer. I'll be talking about a few different series of indexes here, beginning with the temporary traffic control indexes. Now, initially, I had started to list out all of the indexes that were impacted for this upcoming cycle, but the list grew too big. So I, I consolidated down here and just listed standard plans, one or two series. There were very few indexes that weren't impacted. And I'll be discussing some of the, the, the major revisions or changes. There were additional impacts and revisions beyond that. Also, I would like to mention that there will be an upcoming design memo to clarify some of what was done with with these indexes and other associated documents and in an attempt to better tie everything together. So with that, I'll just go ahead and get started here on the temporary traffic control. So some of the main things that were done were that all of the device tables that previously existed uh, for assigning and channelizing devices, those have been consolidated into index 102-000, which was previously index 102-600. Also, there were most of the material statements in the index, which is primarily from 102-600, have moved into the standard specifications section 990. There were some policy statements in the standard specifications that also are from the from the indexes that also moved into standard specifications section 102. Beyond that, looking at some of the major items that moved here, the minimum radii for a normal crown table, that has moved into FDM 240.2.1.4. There were no change changes to the values in that table. The length of lane closures has moved to specification 102-3. Three miles is still the maximum length of lane closures. And lane widths. This is moved to specification 102-5, and there are no change to the values. Now, even though the specification that's currently posted does not show some or reflect some of these changes, the upcoming specification, the workbook that will be released in a couple months, will cover these items. And a draft of the specification will be released with the, the memo that we publish. So here are looking at sheet one of eight for index 102-000. You can see that the device tables are there on the right with the work zone, sign distance, the channelizing device spacing. There's also a complete in table of contents for the series. Sheet two of eight, the drop-off requirements have been consolidated into the single sheet. For the most part, these, these requirements are the same as previous. There was a small change regarding the table one. The minimum offset is now two feet instead of zero. Sheet three of eight. This is our new miscellaneous detail sheet. So some of the the bigger additions here and into the the index as a whole are the speed reduction signing this is a detail that can be applied as a general rule to any particular speed reduction that does occur similarly the motorist awareness system or the MOS, which was previously index 102-670 this is now a detail that just that can be applied to any of the different multi-lane lane closure scenarios and these are items that could be shown in a phasing plan or it could be just 
specified on a on a note sheet in the temporary traffic control plan. Sheet four of eight. This is just showing our general work zone sign installation requirements. The biggest change on this sheet is the work zone sign post table has been revised into a slightly more consolidated table. It doesn't list particular signs. It's just going by the, the sign area that's going to be mounted on the post or post sheet six of eight. The, the big addition on this sheet is the R, RPM placement on multi-lane roadways. Previously, there had just been an RPM placement on two-lane, two-way roadways. Also, the, some of the details have been cleaned up slightly. Sheet seven of eight is showing the temporary raised rumble strips. These details were moved from index 102-603 into 102-000. Moving on into the two-lane roadway lane closure using flaggers, index 102-025. This was previously index 102-603. The device layout has changed slightly, so you will want to pay attention to that. The Temporary raised rumble strips details did move into index 102-000 as we just saw. The criteria, the usage criteria for the temporary raised rumble strips moved to FDM 240.2.2.13. Index 102-005 work beyond the shoulder. This is a combination of the indexes 102-601 and 102-611. There were a few different indexes that have been combined. This was mainly because there had been changes that were occurring on one index and not the other, but, but should have been caught. The work was very similar. There shouldn't have been any significant differences. And any of the indexes that list on the bottom corner there applies to two-lane and multi-lane roadways. That's more or less denoting that there had previously been two indexes for that type of scenario. Index 102-010, work on the shoulder, similarly to the previous. This is a combination of indexes 102-602 and 102-612. The device layout has been changed. Also, there is a new option here, a low speed option for encroaching into the traveled way, which may be used. Index 102-015 mobile operations. This is a combination of indexes 102-607 and 102-619. Uh, one of the bigger changes that occurred in this index beyond the combination is that the required distance between vehicles has been removed. This is to prevent any kind of concerns that may occur due to maybe the, the spacing being too large or too small, depending on the scenario. Uh, we're going to leave that up to the operators in there, depending on what kind of conditions they're running into. So the notes have been revised to reflect that. Index 102-030, the two-lane roadway lane closure using temporary traffic signals. So this was previously index 102-606. The device layout has been changed. Old note number two has been moved to specification 102-9. That note was mostly concerned with um, receiving approval from the district traffic operations engineer for changes to the signal timing. That note has been more or less retained as it had previously been shown in the index. Index 102-045, multi-lane roadway, single lane closure. This was previously index 102-613. One of the bigger changes on this index is that there are optional temporary raised rumble strips that may be used at the discretion of the designer. As I mentioned previously, the, the usage criteria has been moved to 
the FDM, and based on that, the designer can choose whether or not to include this. It should be called out in the plans, either via phasing plan sheets or the notes, if it is to be used. Sheet two was deleted, and once again, the device layout has been changed slightly. One other thing that you'll notice is that note number one, and this is more or less a general rule across the series, has the the reference to index 102-000 for some of the different variables, the work zone sign distance, the buffer length, the tamper length in this case, and also the channelizing device spacing. Index 102-050, multi-lane roadway, multiple lane closure. This was previously index 102-623, this index is also meant to be used in place of the center lane closure from index 102-614. There are the optional temporary raised rumble strips shown here. There is also a new sheet with a triple lane closure, which was not covered anywhere previously. The device layout has been changed mostly to accommodate the temporary raised rumble strips if they are used. Index 102-060, multi-lane roadway, temporary diversion. One of the bigger items here is that there are two different scenarios that the designer will want to pay attention to. There is the, the high-speed option that's shown on this first sheet with temporary barrier. There is also a lower speed op application shown with the temporary lane separator. So you can see here that we have the temporary barrier called out. On sheet two of two, we have the temporary lane separator called out. And this index was replacing a number of different indexes that were previously in the standard plans. For a more complete list of that, I would recommend looking at the, the crosswalk on the standard plans page. Index 102-070, traffic pacing. This was previously index 102-655. A lot of changes did occur on this index. The notes have been revised. Uh, the plan views that were previously on sheets one and three have been combined. The law enforcement instructions were removed. Also, the design information was removed. We do have a section in the FDM that's dedicated to the design calculations required for traffic pacing, and that's FDM 242. This is index 102-075, which was previously index 102-660. The biggest change on this index is that there is a revised option for diverting pedestrians into the travel play. And that's shown here. Also, the criteria for the usage of pedestrian LCPs has changed slightly. If there is a, a barrier that's being used, there are no LCDs required adjacent to that barrier. So if you look closely, you'll see that there are LCDs between the temporary pedestrian lay and the work zone, but there's only temporary barrier on the other side of the pedest temporary pedestrian line. Moving on into the signing and pavement markings, there were no real significant changes to the, the signal indexes. So the first index that we're going to be looking at here is index 700-101. And this is typical sections for replacement of single and multi-column signs. So the, the main changes here are shown in the red where we, we, we modified the lateral offsets for the sign columns. The notes have been slightly cleaned up there. And this is a more complete version or view of this with the, with the changes incorporated. The old 40 foot standard had been causing some confusion and this, the, the changes are more in line now with what is in the MUTCP. Index 
706-001, typical placement and raised payment markers. The only real change in this index for this, this upcoming cycle is that the edge line payment marking around the, the noses has been deleted, and this is to match the details in index 711-001. So you can see here that we no longer have those edge lines. We do have the RPMs retained. Also, the yellow reflective paint where it applies to the, the curb is still shown. Index 711-001 pavement markings. Um, on sheet 2 of 13 here, we do have a new detail for the contrast marking with the dotted lines. Previously, when shown with alternating on every single skip on the dotted lines, it can be almost a continuous marking. So now it's just a, an alternating. Every other skip has a contrast shown. Sheets 5 and 6 of 13, similarly to the typical placement of raised pavement markers, the edge line pavement marking around the, the median noses has been deleted. Sheet 8 of 13, the turn arrow placement has been um, revised to better align with the pavement message spacing table on sheet 1. So you can see in here that those, those messages have been kind of shifted around a little bit. That's the same scenario here on sheet 11 of 13. Some of those pavement messages have shifted around a little bit. Also, the arrow spice spacing detail there on the right. The notes were um, updated accordingly. Sheet 12 of 13, the parking here for the angled parking has been revised. Some of those dimensions, what had previously been a 19 feet 1 inch Offset from the curb face there is now 17 feet. The other dimensions have to be changed accordingly. Also, the 60 degree option has been removed. It's just the 45 degree option now. And the last topic here is the lighting index, which that's index 715-002 the standard aluminum lighting. The biggest change on this index is that the there are new mounting heights of 20 feet and 25 feet. This is meant to accommodate the wildlife sensitive lighting, which is considerably lower powered and may not be able to meet lighting criteria with the full size mounting heights. The SBI has also been updated, and it does provide guidance that to use 8 or 10 feet poles or arms with those new 20 and 25 foot mounting heights. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thanks and have a great day.